Hello and welcome back. My name is Kevin. This is Argument Parsing in Rust, version 2. This is episode 7, Flags. Finally, we made it. All right, so in our last video, we talked about how to get values out of arguments. Well, now we're going to talk about flags, and flags don't necessarily have values. So we're not necessarily building on that part, but flags are slightly, just slightly more complicated than, um, than positional arguments. So let's go back to the arg struct in the documentation. The only other two things really that matter for flags besides all of the ones that we've already covered in uh, positional or free arguments is one, they don't have an index, and uh, two, they do have a long or a short. Now, when I say a long or a short, what I mean is, there we go. What I mean is a long is usually a double hyphen followed by a full word, whereas a short is usually a single hyphen followed by a single character. There are some slight exceptions to that and some different things that we can do. Um, but for the most part, when I say long or short, that's what I mean. Either something preceded by a double hyphen and an entire word and or something by a single hyphen and a single character. All right, so flags. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open up our fake program again. I'm going to leave arg1 and arg2 just for reference. We can even leave in some of our parsing or some of our actual value statements out of that. But now we're gonna add some additional arguments. Let's add our first flag. So we say arg arg with name and the name we're going to give this one is uh let's just say flg1 all right so now if we were to do this and just save it this is actually a positional argument if you remember uh because that's what they default to what we can do to turn it into something other than a positional argument is give it either a short or a long so if we say short f, this is now going to turn it into a flag. By doing that right there, just that one single line, we now have a flag. Let's go ahead and uh, compile that. Now we have something else added to our flags. If we run dash lowercase f, we should still have no arguments for arg1 or arg2. Notice nothing was output. If we do one and two, we do have values for one and two. So remember those indexes back when I was talking about those aren't, those take other options and flags and things, those don't get taken into effect. It's only for positional arguments. Notice the output here, arg1 was used. It was used one time, the value was one. Arg2 was used one time, value was two. We can also do this and the output's gonna be the same. We could even do both of them before and it's gonna be the same. Because arg2 accepts multiples, let me show you something weird here. It's sort of continued going even after the flag. So when clap reaches something that it can't parse or rather that it wasn't expecting, it looks to see if one of the positional arguments accepts multiples and an unspecified number, as in no maximum, and it'll just continue parsing those values into that one. Let's go ahead and remove the multiple. Actually, you know what? No, we're going to leave that there. Uh, let's just remove arg2 altogether. And we're going to remove the parsing from arg2 as well. The only reason is I don't want this to get confusing when we start talking about options as well. So we can we can rerun this. First, let's compile it again. All right, and that works. Now, if we do two here, we should get an error saying it wasn't expecting that. Yes. Let's put the two on the other side. So. Remember, uh, speaking again about the context-sensitive errors, notice once it reached the error, arg1 and the lower and the flag had already been used. So it was saying, Clap was saying, I saw that you tried to use arg1 and you tried to use the flag, lowercase f, 
Um, but we weren't expecting this too. Go ahead and try it again without that. Even though neither one of those two arguments is required and they don't show up in the, the default usage string up here. All right, so that's a short. Let's add some help text to this as well. All right, we've got our help text now. Same thing, it works as before. Let's add a long. Now, you don't have to use either a short and a long. You could just use a long or you could just use a short, but you have to use one or the other, or it's going to go back to being an arg. Notice I'm also not putting the dash dash or the dash before anything. That's because uh, you can, but it will strip it out. So there's no reason to do that. So we named it F, uh, let's call it R flag. Now I did this because I want you to see that you can put hyphens in the name. That's perfectly valid and it'll work just fine. You don't have to put a hyphen in the name. We could have called it R flag. We could have called it R flag like that. But by convention, most long or multiple compound word um, flags have hyphens instead of spaces. And now you see we can also use it by calling. Now let's do something that's not defined, just our. By default, Clap has something uh, turned on called suggestions that will say, hey, you typed in our, which is kind of close to a flag you did define, our flag. Are you sure you didn't mean that? And then we'll put in our flag is how you could have used it. You can turn that off if that's a feature you don't want, uh, and we'll speak about some of the conditional compiling uh, later on. But let's do something we didn't define at all. Let's do, um, I'm having a hard, I'm coming up with blanks. There we go. All right, so found argument number, which wasn't expected, or it's not valid in this context. It's the same error we've been seeing a few times. So you can see it's not just accepting anything with a double hyphen. Let's remove the short. And see what it looks like without that. Because clap should realign that. So you can see here we just we're missing the short. No big deal. All right, so now we know how to define flags. We know how to define um, define shorts and longs. We're going to go back and add that short back. If we were to add an, inst an index, let's see what happens. We're actually going to get a panic. Gonna be the same thing. It'll say argument flag one has conflicting requirements. It has both an index and a short or long were supplied, meaning it can't be both a positional argument and a flag or an end, either a flag or an option at the same time. This is why I was saying you can move kind of back and forth between arguments or between argument types, depending on which style or what properties you set. So you can't set an index on a flag. Another interesting note, and this might be a head scratcher at first, is flags can't be required. Now you might be asking, why in the world can't flags be required? Can't be required because it's a flag. Perhaps you forgot to set takes value true. Takes value true, we're going to talk about in the next video, and that's with options. But what that does, it, the reason a flag can't be required is a flag is a Boolean value. It's it's a yes or a no with an asterisk. Yes, you can also have multiple flags, which I'm going to show in just a second. But for the most part, a flag is either there or it isn't. 
So if a flag is required to be there, why have a flag at all? Because if it's always going to be there, then it's always going to be true. Um, there are things you can do with flags and requirements. You can't directly set flag or required, or, you know, required true for a flag. You can, however, and we'll discuss this in a future video, have a group of arguments of flags and make that group required true. Now then what that will do is it'll say one of these flags has to be used. It doesn't mean all of the flags have to be used, but it, has to, it means at least one of these flags has to be used, and I don't care which one, or multiple ones of those ones have to be used. So that's, you can get around the flag requirement options, or the flag requirement uh, settings, but just so you know, if you're trying to design a CLI and you have a flag and you want to set required true, that might be a pause or might be a good time to pause and think about why you want that flag to be required. And there's usually another way to, to get around what you're trying to do. All right, so now we still have our help. We have a long and a short. We are also going to set multiple. Now calling multiple with a flag is just like with, uh, with an option. Notice it doesn't have dot, dot, dot. That's because for a flag to be, you know, I, I don't think I've ever personally seen a flag that has, or a flag or switch, it's, I use those terms interchangeably, um, with a dot, dot, dot after it. Some places might, so don't, don't quote me on that. But all it allows you to do is right now we have F, we can do F, F, F. We can do this as many times as we want. And it's going to, uh, going to allow us. Now something with flags that you can do <clears throat> is you can combine flags. So first let's define another another flag. Flag 2. This one, we're not gonna give it a long, we're just gonna give it, we're gonna give this one a capital F. Now the short or the long, they can contain um, any sort of valid UTF-8. So you can have other characters besides just ASCII characters here. Now, there may not be some test cases that, that allow that, but for the most part, you should be able to use any valid UTF-8. All right, let's also add some parsing down here. So let's say, now pretty much all you can do for flags is, uh, is present or occurrences of, because they have no value. All right, so now we have these. We're also gonna set multiple on flag two. All right, we're not gonna set it just yet but in the next demo we will. All right, so flag one was used and flag two was used. All right, so remember how I said we can combine flags. Clap allows combining flags with a single hyphen like so. We can also put them in on the other order. That's gonna work as well. That's the same as typing that or actually the reverse of that but either way clap allows uh combining flags single character flags like that 
All right, so we actually set multiple true on both. Let's set multiple true on only one. So we only set multiple true on our F, on our capital F. It was used four times and it was used. We can also do things like this. Or we can do like this. You can also combine if, uh, if a flag has a short and a long and it accepts multiples, you can do, you know, dash F, dash, dash, our flag. That would be fine as well. That would count as two occurrences of uh, flag one. So that's the multiples of flags and the combining of flags. And that's pretty much all there is to, uh, to flags or switches, whichever one you want to call them. They're pretty simple. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do with the matches, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it, come back next time, and we're going to start talking about options, which is arguably the more complicated of the three different styles. So thanks again.